Welcome back everyone. Today we have here the Hover 1 Dynamo that I got off Walmart for about 160. This is a budget electric scooter that's perfect for beginner who don't want to spend an arm and a leg for one. Looking at the box, this scooter is foldable which make it easy for storage and transportation. It has front and back air fill tire that help cushion your ride to make it feel a bit more comfortable. It comes with electronic and manual brake, a throttle, and a bright LCD display. This scooter can support a max weight of 264 pounds and can go up to 16 miles per hour with the 9 miles range. I've done a full range test so continue watching this video and we'll see if these numbers are accurate. Out of the box, it comes with a typical Hover 1 charger. We also have here two twist on handlebars. These handlebars have a slight curve on the end where you can rest the palm of your hand. And we have here some documentation and an allen key that you can use to adjust or tighten the bolts on the scooter. To set up the scooter, it will just unfold like this. There's a latch that you will push into place and there's a little lock that you will turn horizontally to lock the latch and prevent it from popping out. And we have here the handlebar that just twists onto the screw like you see here. Just from standing on the scooter, it does feel sturdy and seems to be made of decent quality. Let's go ahead and take it outside so we can take a better look at it. The scooter measure about 43 inches long and 47 inches tall, and it only weighs about 25 pounds, so carrying the scooter is not too difficult and can fit most back trunk. The handlebar feels solid and the curves help give your hand a better grip on the handlebar and better control the scooter. If we look at the front here, we have here the electronic brake on the left and the throttle on the right. They are both spring loaded and seem to move smoothly without any hesitation. The hook to lock the scooter when in the folded position is welded onto the stem of the scooter. This hook can serve another purpose such as hanging your bags. The scooter has a 250 watt motor on the rear that can get you up to speed within a few seconds. The motor also provides you with the electronic brake while the fender also gives you the option to manually brake. The scooter has no suspension whatsoever. Instead, the front wheel has an 8.5 inch airflow tire while the back has an 8.8. These tires help act as suspension to help cushion your ride to give you a better riding experience. The deck measures 5.5 inches wide and 19 inches from the fender to the stem. We have here the traditional kickstand on the left side of the scooter that seems to do a good job at supporting the scooter up. Now let's check out the LCD display. The screw has 3 speed level. Level 1 gets you up to 7 mph, per hour. level 2 gets you up to 11 mph, per hour. and level 3 gets you up to 16 miles per hour. If you press the middle button, you can toggle through the display, such as the odometer, RPM, volume and battery, etc. The screw has a few programmable features. To access these features, you will need to press and hold the top and bottom button until PO comes up. PO is default to 12. P1 is to change mile per hour to kilometer per hour. P2 is to turn on and off a square symbol. If you know what this symbol is, feel free to let me know in the comment below. P3 is to turn off automatic start. P4 through P9 are default so you won't be able to change any of those settings. So let's write the square for the first time. So far the scooter is smooth, and the motor has no problem carrying my 160 pound body forward. Let's do a quick speed test. This here is at low speed number one. We're getting about seven miles per hour.
This here is at the second speed. We're getting top speed at 11 miles per hour. And this one is at the fast speed number three, okay? This one we're getting taught to be at 16 miles per hour. Now let's do a brake test. The first test is with the electronic brake at level three. Second test is with the manual brake at level three. Both braking methods produce very similar result. Stopping distance with full speed was about 20 feet for both. For that reason, I would highly recommend you to be aware of your surrounding, as this screw will not be able to stop you instantly if you need it to. I decided to take a screw out for some road tests. For a 250 watt motor, I didn't expect any lightning speed or acceleration, but I thought the screw performed well. The motor was quiet and didn't have any problem pushing me to full speed within a matter of seconds. The throttle is responsive and the brake, although it doesn't have the instant stopping power, responds pretty good. The airflow tire also did a really good job of cushioning the road to help reduce all the bumps, vibration, and noise that you would typically get on a hard tire. Although this scooter doesn't have all the bells and whistle, I was extremely glad that it at least has cruise control. To activate cruise control, once you reach full speed at the level you're on, all you need to do is hold down the throttle for 3 seconds and release it. This will trigger cruise control. To deactivate cruise control, you will either press the brake or the throttle. The cool feature of this scooter is that you can disable the kick to start feature. This gives power to the motor and makes the scooter go without having you to give it a push. As part of the range test, I took the scooter out to the dirt road to see how it performed. I thought I performed pretty good on dirt rail. One main issue I had with the scooter was how awful the back fender vibrates as I travel down the dirt rail. After riding the scooter for a few hours, I finally ran out of battery with the E8 code. I was surprised I managed to get a total of 9.4 miles out of the full charge, which was right on the dot of what I ever claimed. Overall, I'm satisfied with this scooter. It's not the best, but for 160, it's a solid scooter. With top speed of 60 miles per hour and a total range of 9 miles, this is enough speed and distance for most people who just want an extra scooter to stroll around the neighborhood with. If you are new to electric scooter, I would recommend you just give this one a try. 
Well, that's it for this video. If you'd like to see more review like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It will help support my channel and help me make more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.